Today we'll be learning about the most common home remedies for period pain or menstrual pain that one can easily make with the herbs and spices that are usually available at home. I'm Shrikant Singh and welcome to our channel Happy Belly Fish. Kitchen is no less than a small apothecary where we keep a range of herbs and spices but rarely do we use them for common and regularly occurring conditions. I learned most of these remedies after my marriage and saw closely how uncomfortable the situation was for a woman. Luckily, I had a wife who shared her discomfort and explained the situation and a mother who was always either in person or a phone call away. I love cooking, that's like my hobby and I use food and spices as the age-old remedies that have been used since forever to solve common problems at home. But please don't ignore a proper medical advice from your doctor, especially if the pain is severe and if you're anemic. If you're a man watching this, the first thing you can do is to learn to agree and be patient during this time. And if you're a woman watching this, then I think you can take the first step on educating the men in the house, especially the younger ones. Now, the recipes, because this guy talks so much, right? So the first remedy is a simple tea that you can make with one of the spices that is usually there in the house. Fennel seeds, cumin seeds, or ajwain seeds. These spices can help with abdominal cramps caused due to bloating. So how do you make this tea? You just take one cup of water, boil it, and add two teaspoons of fennel seeds. Bring it to a nice boil and allow it to cool before you serve it. In the same way, you can make this tea with cumin, ajwain, celery seeds, juniper berries, allspice, or even with mint. Both fresh or dried mint can be used. You can have this tea throughout the day. This will also help you drink warm liquids. It will help you stay hydrated. And if the taste of the herbal tea is something that is not appealing to you, then you can always add some honey. The second remedy is a step up. Here we'll be using spices that generally helps in relief from spasms. So we will make a tea using half a liter of water, two inch of ginger that is grated finely, half a teaspoon of black pepper that is coarsely ground, to black cardamom. If you have it, great. If you don't have it, it's perfectly fine. And if you don't have black cardamom, you have green cardamom, you can actually add even that. Add half a teaspoon of nutmeg that is grated. Add about a two inch piece of cinnamon or cassia, whichever of these two you have. And half a teaspoon of clove. Boil these ingredients together. And when the water has come to a boil, turn off the heat and allow it to cool down to a drinkable temperature. Strain the tea, but do not discard the spices. You can actually make one to two batch of tea more with these cooked spices. And is it okay to add honey? Absolutely, but remember, do not cook the honey, rather add it to the cup of your tea. I've added a lot of spices, but even if you do not have one or two spices, you can still make it. If you have just cinnamon with you, then you can even make this tea with that. Cinnamon is known to improve blood circulation and both cinnamon and clove have compounds that are anti-inflammatory and anti-spasmodic, which basically helps in reducing cramps and pain. You can drink this about two to three times in a day or whenever you feel like having some warm fluids. The third remedy is a fenugreek seed concoction. Fenugreek seeds contain dioskinin that may help with stomach discomfort and menstrual cramps. It is very simple to make. Soak one teaspoon of fenugreek overnight in a glass of water. The next day, strain the water. And even though you might feel that fenugreek seed are bitter, the water is actually not. It actually tastes quite good and you do not have to add any sweetener to this. This is something that can be had before breakfast or the first thing in the morning. Also, do not throw the seeds away. They actually can be sprouted and you can add them to your salad or to your lentil soup. The fourth remedy are the common herbal teas. Generally, coffee and black tea are not recommended in this condition. It might be very appealing out of pure habit, but they can cause bloating. So herbal teas like chamomile tea, dry mint tea, hibiscus tea, rose petal tea, fenugreek tea, raspberry tea, or even green tea are good options. Raspberry leaf tea and hibiscus tea are especially helpful during excessive flow but they are also known to reduce the blood pressure. So you might like to ask a herbalist if it is okay for you to have this tea or if it is suitable for you. Try to look for a good herbalist in your town and they can prepare a tea mix specifically for your needs. Now I'm going to show you a tea that I make for my wife quite often. To make this tea, you need one and a half cup of water, two inch piece of true cinnamon or cassia, 
one teaspoon of clove and about three flowers of hibiscus. Now I have fresh hibiscus available in my garden but you can always use dried hibiscus tea for this. There are a variety of hibiscus flowers and you can use the flower of any color that is around you. Add cinnamon and clove to the water and bring it to boil. When the water has reduced to about a quarter then turn off the flame. Remove the petals of the flowers like this and discard the stem and the stigma. Wash them and check that there are no insects you know, lurking around in this flower. Now add these petals to the pot containing the spiced water and leave it for a few minutes. The petals will discolor slowly in the water as the tea is cooling. When serving, add a few slices of lemon to the water. This tea is quite delicious actually and also very calming. Hibiscus flowers are used in traditional medicine and also as food in many countries. They are very rich source of vitamin C and they contain compounds that are analgesic and anti-inflammatory that can reduce the severity of the cramps. The fifth tea is a turmeric tea. This tea can be made with fresh turmeric or ground turmeric powder. I'm going to show you the one with ground turmeric powder because most often this is the type of turmeric people have in the kitchen. Take a glass and add half a teaspoon of turmeric, a pinch of black pepper, and now add warm water, some lemon juice, and honey if you want to make it sweeter. Some people are like, I don't want anything sweet in my life. So you may not want to add it. You don't have to. The sixth remedy is Jamu. Now this is a traditional turmeric drink from Indonesia called Kunia Tasim. And the women in Indonesia have this, especially during menstruation. I have an entire video on this. So if you want to watch it, you will find the link in the description of this video. Add a pinch of black pepper when you have prepared this Jamu, whenever you are having this. And this will increase the absorption of curcumin significantly. While these were the teas that bring comfort and relief, there are also some simple things that can be done that are quite often overlooked. First is the hot water bag and second is a simple massage with sesame oil on the abdomen and lower back or legs. Lightly warm the oils before using and that should help in soothing the pain. You do not have to be a professional masseur to do this. Press the bottom of your palm gently on the body, moving it upwards like this. It will improve the circulation and the heat from your palm may bring a lot of pain relief. If you're massaging the abdomen, then use the fingers and not your palm and move it in a circular motion. Menstrual discomfort can also be reduced if you're careful about what you eat before, during and after the cycle. A habit that you can develop is to eat about 10 to 15 almonds every day throughout the month or at least 10 days before your cycle begins. Almonds are a very rich source of B vitamins, vitamin E and magnesium and may help in reducing cramps. You can drink pomegranate juice or tender coconut water during and after the cycle is over and avoid stimulants like coffee, tobacco and alcohol. Your body will also definitely tell you that it's craving for iron rich foods. This happens, this kind of feeling comes especially after the cycle is over. So you can take foods that are rich in iron like leafy greens, legumes or meat. And if you're somebody who has to drink your coffee, then avoid drinking it right after the meal as it will reduce the absorption of iron sufficiently in the body. There are very simple magnesium and iron rich foods that I can make a separate video about. Please let me know in the comments if that is something that you'd like me to make. Eating light food and getting adequate rest, not sitting for prolonged time in the chair are some of the other things that can help. I hope this video was helpful and if you feel that this can help others in your friends and family then please share it with them. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.